Hey, good morning. From the quiet of my room this morning. Because the kids are out there running around like crazy, doing all sorts of anarchy, chaos. And we would never get through Genesis chapter 7. Actually, the kids are great. They're downstairs playing in the basement. <clears throat> and our kitchen where I normally do our morning video, that's the mess. Because of all the kids stuff and kids breakfast items that we had today. So, this morning we are looking at Genesis chapter 7. We're going to begin, um, actually we started reading the flood narrative yesterday and we're going to read more of it. Um, going to read more of it this morning and talk about that. Good morning to Ruth, good morning to Lori. I looked um, on my own Facebook earlier today, and um, it was one year ago today that we did our very first morning devotional video. So we have been at this for, we have been at this for one year, hard to believe. March 17th of 2020. <clears throat> Who would have thought that this is where we were going to be? So if you have your Bible, um, I would love for you to open it to, um, to Genesis chapter 7. Um, like I said, we're going to be reading um, the, the beginning of the flood narrative today. And we'll, um, we're not going to finish the whole thing um, this week, but we'll, get it, we'll finish it next week. So you can follow along um, in Genesis 7. So God's called Noah to, um, to build the ark, right? The whole earth was filled with, um, was corrupt and filled with violence is what the scripture says. Uh, we had this comparison yesterday that we talked about between the family of Noah and um, all of the other people. And God is, um, he sees all of this wickedness. He sees all of these evil things taking place. It says it was he it was he was sorry, the Lord was sorry he ever made them and put them on the earth. It broke his heart. So God's acting out of sadness um, to um, to protect his creation. Um, I think that's a really helpful way to look at it. Um, I think that was that was the way they talked about it in uh, one of the Bible Project videos I watched about Genesis a few months ago when we were starting off this How the Bible Works series. Um, yeah, God operate. God is operating out of protection for His creation. Um, so to keep it, to keep it from being utterly destroyed, uh, He destroys mankind. Um, so um, that's a. I think that's a really good way to think about it. So good morning to. Let's see who else has come on here. Um, good morning to Roseanne and Christy, Tony. Good to see you. I heard you made it back to your house yesterday, so we're glad for that. Um, so we're going to read uh, Genesis chapter 7. We're going to jump in. When everything was ready, so the, boat, so the boat was made, the Lord said to Noah, Go into the boat with all your family, for among all the people of the earth, I can see that you alone are righteous. So here, like we have been told now um, several times uh, that Noah is righteous. Noah's not like all of the other people on the earth, all of the other families on the earth. Noah is righteous. So God is, God is communicating uh, through, through this text that, um, that there's a difference between people who trust and follow God's desire and God's designs for right and wrong and who pursue their own uh, perspectives and their own desires uh, for right and wrong. Take with you seven pairs, male and female, of each animal I have approved for eating and for sacrifice, and take one pair of each of the others. Now, I remember the first time, like when I read this and I was actually paying attention, I always thought that God that God just told Moses to take two of every kind of animal. We read that yesterday, but that's not true. Um, they took seven pairs. Of every animal that he has approved for eating and for sacrifice and take one pair of each of the other animals so one of the things that we can see here 
is that somewhere between Genesis, uh, between Genesis two, I think it was. Let's see. I'm gonna flip back. Yeah, some or Genesis one, somewhere between Genesis chapter one and Genesis chapter seven, verse two, God told God gave permission to Adam and Eve that they were allowed to eat certain kind of animals. We don't see where that where it says that, but obviously if they're taking seven pairs of each animal they've approved for eating and for sacrifice, somewhere between Genesis 1 and Genesis 7, God gave permission to man to eat, eat animals, to eat meat. Also take seven pairs of every kind of bird. There must be a male and female in each pair to ensure that all life will survive on the earth after the flood. Seven days from now, I will make the rains pour down on the earth, and it will rain for 40 days and 40 nights until I have wiped from the earth all the living things I have created. So, like, I think this is this is one of those examples um, where we think um, where we think, oh, man, God, God, like, went off on a on a rampage on an anger filled rampage and destroyed the entire earth and killed everybody, killed everything um, and didn't. Like he was merciful. Some, there were some animals. There were some of every animal, in fact, that survived. This is an example of God's grace, of God's mercy. We'll probably get into this a little bit when we read through the Book of Revelation here, um, here in a few months. You know, we see like God destroys, you know, like a third of all the people. God destroys a third once, and then He destroys a third of all the people again. And we're like, oh, why is God killing all these people? Well, we look at all the people that he saved, right? I know that's a hard concept for us. So Noah did everything as the Lord commanded. Noah was 600 years old when the flood covered the earth. He went on board the boat to escape the flood, he and his wife and his sons and their wives. With them were all the variety, various kinds of animals, those approved for eating and for sacrifice and those that were not, along with all the birds and the small animals that scurry along the ground. They entered the boat in pairs, male and female, just as God had commanded Noah. After seven days, the waters of the flood came and covered the earth. When Noah was 600 years old, on the 17th day of the second month, all the underground waters erupted from the earth, and the rain fell in mighty torrents from the sky. The rain continued to fall for 40 days, and 40 nights. So let's put this down here for a second. So if you remember back to, um, if you remember back to Genesis 1, um, I want to say, uh, Genesis, wait, here we go. Genesis 1, day 2, uh, we talked about how, um, how God separated the waters, right? Um, I should have just kept that open. I shouldn't have set my Bible down. Let there be a space between the waters to separate the waters of the heavens from the waters of the earth. This is what happened. God made this space to separate the waters of the earth from the waters of the heavens. God called the space sky. So we had talked about, this was a few weeks ago on our, on our video, maybe last week or the week before. Um, we talked about how when God, made, when God initially made the earth, it was like a formless, chaotic void of basically water. It was like a ball of water. And, and that water, like, extended to the sky. Like, it would have been, um, to say it would have been foggy would not do it justice. So what God did, God created the sky. He separated the waters to the ground and the waters into the sky. So, so basically around the entire earth, there was like this, um, I don't remember what word I used to describe it, but it was better than the way I'm doing it right now. Um, there was like... There was like a barrier in the sky of of water above like above above the space right so he separated there was there was sky water and there was um, surface water and what we're seeing and then and then um, as we read through Genesis we see how um, how ground came up out of the water the, the, the water separated in the land and sky or um, land and sea, land and ocean, land and water. And what we're seeing right here now is all of that, all of that order that God created in the first six days um, of creation, all of that order is now being undone. 
the the water from the sky begins to do what? It begins to come to the earth. The water that was that was on the surface, that was broken up and separated by land, begins to rise. Comes up out of the earth, it says. Ground waters erupted from the earth and rain fell in mighty torrents from the sky. So all of that, all of that chaos that God um, undid on day two with the waters is now coming back together. Sky water is falling. Ground water is coming up. And back to chaos, right? Um, all of the things, all of the order that God made with the animals, um, all the hierarchies of the animals, you know, we, we tend to think of the way the animal kingdom operates with in, in, in certain hierarchies, all of that gets undone. And what God is doing here is he is taking the order that, that he initially made and he is returning it to chaos. And as we read through the flood receding tomorrow in chapter 8, we're going to see that order again be restored. That very day Noah had gone into the boat with his wife and his sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, and their wives. With them in the boat were every were pairs of every kind of animal, domestic and wild, large and small, along with birds of every kind. Two by two they came into the boat, representing every living thing that breathes. A male and female of each kind entered, just as God had commanded Noah. Then the Lord closed the door behind them. For forty days the floodwaters grew deeper, covering the earth and lifting the boat high above the earth. So there it is, right? We're seeing this chaos. Um, God is allowing chaos to return to his creation. The waters rode higher and higher above the ground. The boat floated safely on the surface. Finally, the water covered even the highest mountain on the earth, rising more than 22 feet above the highest peaks. There it is. Chaos. Water. Now, it's not dark. So if we go back to Genesis chapter 1, um, it's not dark, but it's, I would say if it's a ball of water, it is form, it's formless, it may not be empty in the way that we think, it's not dark, but it is, it's a ball of water, it is, um, it's chaos. All the living things on the earth died, birds, domestic animals, wild animals, small animals that scurry along the ground, and all the people. Everything that breathed and lived on dry land died. God wiped out every living thing on the earth. People, livestock, small animals that scurry on the ground, and the birds of the sky, all were destroyed. The only people who survived were Noah and those with him in the boat, and the floodwaters covered the earth for 150 days. So, we're getting a, like I'm pushing a button. Um, like we talked about, if you remember, uh, toward the end of 2020, uh, beginning in December. I, I might have said this every week, every Sunday during the month of December. Um, January 1st, 2021, God is not pushing, like we're not pushing a big reboot button, right? A big reset button where everything is just going to, um, uh, at the end of the year and the beginning of a new year, like everything is just going to be different. That's not, that's not how time works. Um, that's pretty close to what's happening here, though, in Genesis chapter 7. God is taking all, and yes, I'm being repetitive on purpose. If you, like when we read through that, did you hear the repetition that was taking place? Um, this repetition is important, like if we want to be a little nerdy for a minute, as if we're not being nerdy enough. This repetition is important because these stories were passed down through oral tradition before they were documented, Okay. So we, Chris, most people believe that Moses wrote the first five books of the Bible. Um, so these would have been passed down, which is why uh, there's repetition. Um, that's why it's easy for us to remember song lyrics, because there's repetition in the lyrics. There's repetition in the tomb. Um, so what God basically is doing in Genesis chapter 7, so repeat, he is rebooting. He's rebooting the earth. He is restoring a... He's taking everything from the way that it has been created, restoring it to chaos. And then again, what we're going to see tomorrow is the waters are going to recede, and we're going to we're going to um, we're going to see a version. Um, 
we're going to see a version of Genesis chapter 1. Again, we're going to see a version of creation taking place yet, um, yet again. And it's going to, it's going to, it's going to sort of follow in the same order. Um, and we're going to talk more about that. Um, we're going to talk more about that tomorrow. So, um, so that's why we've been talking about, we want to look for, we want to look for similarities in the text. So again, this is when we do this, um, when we do this together in the mornings, um, this is about learning how to read the Bible. Um, that is, that's one reason why we do this, right? I love the relationship. I love spending time with you. I think it's great. Um, I love that we get to do this together and we share prayer requests and we get to kind of build like an online community. And a big part of what we're doing um, on, on, during our time together in the morning is learning how to read um, how to read the Bible together. So, um, not every morning uh, devotion that, or morning reading that we're going to have is going to be like, oh, here's like, here's your good verse, your good, your feel good verse for the day. Um, go, uh, go and do this because we want to learn how to read the Bible. And there have been times where, like, I've read the Bible and I haven't had that happen. Uh, for me, like I'm just reading scripture, I'm learning scripture, I'm, I'm seeing what God's heart is. I think that one thing we can see, um, a little hint that is going to, um, that's going to come up throughout the re beginning, um, like beginning right here in scripture, something that we're going to see throughout the rest of the Old Testament is that God always has a remnant. Always, God always has a remnant of people. There's always a group of people that are set aside by God to be a remnant. And you can see that throughout the rest of the Old Testament. Um, God, when God takes the people to in exile to Babylon, there's a remnant. There's a small group of people that are left behind. There's, if we were, um, we're going to, I don't know that we're going to talk about Daniel this week. It's, um, no, Dan, yeah, I don't think we're going to talk about Daniel this week. It's one of the uh, books of the Bible that are kind of covered in what we're going to discuss, but Daniel's probably not going to get a mention. But Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, um, they were a remnant. See? So what we want to do is we want to teach you how to be on the lookout for little things like that. Like, what is God doing here? He's setting aside a remnant. So there's always going to be a group of people who are set aside, who are righteous because of who he is, not because of what they've done, but righteous because of who he is. They're following, they're being obedient to his standards of right and wrong, and God is protecting those people. Okay? So today, no real, again, two weeks, two days in a row, no like, oh, that's a good, that's a good coffee cup verse um, for the day. Um, we're just teaching you how to read the Bible today. And we're probably just going to be teaching you how to read the Bible for a while in the book of Genesis. Because we want you, um, at Westway Christian Church, we want you to know how to read the Bible. We want you to know how to be on the lookout for these little, for these little things, for these little similarities between stories. Um, the phrase that we've been using the past couple days is slipping in my mind right now, so I can't remember what it is. Um, but we're trying to teach you how to read, uh, read the Bible this morning. So tomorrow we are going to read Genesis chapter 8 together. We're going to see how God um, again restores order and brings order out of the chaos um, that, that's been created, that has been allowed um, by him, that has been called, called into existence by him. So I'm going to pray and then um, I'm going to encourage you to read um, the first nine chapters of Genesis um, certainly read chapter 8 before tomorrow, but you should read the first nine chapters of Genesis um, to see how that uh, to see how that works. So let's uh, let's pray together. God, we're thankful for your word. Um, we're thankful that um, you always set aside a remnant of people. Um, we're thankful for the way that your your word works to draw people to you um, to. Um, to reveal your truth uh, to us and 
God, we know that you, through this story, we know that you love your creation. We know that you love what you have made and you are going to act um, to protect it. Um, we know because you have made us that you love us. You care for us and you have acted um, through your son Jesus. You have acted to protect your creation. You've acted to protect us, to show us that there is a way um, to live that is that does not lead to death. There is a way to live that does not lead to destruction. Um, the way to live that does not lead to death and destruction is through your son Jesus. It's through obedience to your will, uh, to your words, to your laws, and to your desires for our heart. So I um, just ask that you would be with each one of us today, that we would be thinking about these things, um, and that you would bring us back together safely tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. For, um, for the next chapter in the book of Genesis. And it's in your sons and we pray. Amen. So I love you guys, and I'm praying with you, and I'm praying for you. And again, I just want to encourage you um, to spend time in God's Word. Um, sometime today, read through the first nine chapters of, um, of the book of Genesis. Um, it'll be good for you. So I love you. And we'll see you tomorrow morning at 7 a.m.